In today's video, I will share everything you need to know about importing from China in just 10 minutes. Whether you are a novice importer or an experienced entrepreneur, importing from China and gaining substantial and sustainable profits has been the dream of countless global entrepreneurs. In theory, it sounds easy. You select a product, find a cheap manufacturer in China, push it to the market, optimize your marketing and branding, and watch the dollars roll into your account. However, as many who have attempted to import from China know, the reality is not so simple. In addition to facing marketing and branding challenges, as an importer, you must overcome numerous obstacles. Are you ready to learn how to import from China? Let's go! Step 1. Choose a product to import. The first step to successful importing is selecting the right product. It's much more challenging than simply choosing the cheapest or highest priced item. Some guidelines to follow when selecting a product include Choose a product you are passionate about. Passion will drive your motivation, and it's infectious, making others more likely to be drawn to your product. Consider shipping costs. Products that can be shipped in bulk may be much cheaper than those that cannot. Carefully consider the size of your product and how much you can ship in one go. Consider the uniqueness of the product. If the product you produce is not so unique, you risk someone else starting mass production. Step 2. Create a list of Chinese exporters or suppliers that can provide you with the product. You can find suppliers through online directories or professional purchasing companies. Here are some good resources. Made-in-China.com, a Chinese supplier directory that provides buyers with product catalogs, complete company information, contract details, and enterprise culture data, along with factory photos. Step 3. Contact each supplier on your list. Once you have your list of exporters, you can start narrowing down your choices by inquiring about suitable suppliers. You want each exporter to provide you with Customer recommendations A reputable supplier should be able to provide customer testimonials and recommendations. Once they provide them, verify their authenticity. Information about business licenses You want to ensure any company you do business with has the proper licensing and complies with all applicable trade regulations to avoid future legal issues that may impact your business. Production and personnel data Confirm that you understand the relationship between the exporter and the manufacturer. For example, do they produce the products themselves, or if not, do they also charge commissions to the manufacturer, or do they only work for you? Name and address of the factory producing the product. If the exporter refuses to provide you with the name and address of the product manufacturer, they may not be a trustworthy supplier. Information on the factory's experience in producing this type of product. When choosing a supplier, cost is not the only thing to consider, quality is equally important, and the manufacturer's experience can indicate the quality of their work. Product samples Unless you are producing your own new product, the supplier should be able to provide you with product samples to better understand their quality and know what you are paying for in advance. Step 4. Negotiate the deal with your preferred supplier. Remember, business dealings with Chinese exporters are influenced by Chinese culture and customs, requiring different negotiation techniques and tactics. Some things to keep in mind when negotiating with Chinese suppliers are Focus on building relationships. Chinese people do not do business with companies, they do business with people, and each business deal is an opportunity to build a new relationship with another party. Therefore, Chinese exporters are less likely to close a deal directly with you before they have the opportunity to know you. Trust is built on moral influence rather than legal influence. Chinese executives tend to rely on a sense of group morality rather than legal responsibility. This does not mean you can ignore wise business practices such as signing a contract, but it means you should prioritize the desire to sign a contract and build a relationship of trust, where both parties feel morally obligated to fulfill the agreement, even if they have not signed the contract. Step 5. Contact distributors in the United States. Reaching out to distributors for your product may be a laborious and time-consuming process, but you can increase your chances of success and save time by following a few simple steps. First, use the customs data system to find your suppliers or customers and narrow down precise customers. 
Then, find their company details page to view contact information, such as LinkedIn, email, etc., for quick and direct contact. Next, call each potential distributor and introduce yourself and your company to the decision makers. Ask if they would like to receive relevant information via email and confirm their email address. Send a brief email along with professionally designed attachments, introducing your company and products. A few days after sending the email, follow up with a phone call and arrange a meeting. During the meeting, market your products and sign a contract to secure the order. With these steps in mind, here are the details of trading in China that you must remember. What documents are required for Chinese customs clearance? Commercial invoice. This is the formal proof of the goods transaction, including detailed information about the goods, quantity, price, and information of both the buyer and seller. Packing list records the packing details of the goods, including the quantity, weight, size, etc. Import license Some goods may require an import license from the Chinese government to be imported. Certificate of origin used to prove the origin of the goods, which may be required based on trade agreements. Transport documents, including bill of lading, airway bill, etc., to prove that the goods have been transported from overseas to China. Customs Declaration Form, the document used for customs declaration, providing detailed information about the goods, value, taxes, etc. Payment Receipts, to prove that relevant duties, import taxes, and other fees have been paid. Inspection Reports, some specific goods may require inspection and certification, and the inspection report is provided for customs clearance. Bill of Lading, B L, is an important document used for transporting goods recording the transportation details and transfer of responsibility during sea or land transportation. It is both a transportation contract and a voucher for goods transport. The bill of lading contains the following information. Shipper, detailed information about the exporter or shipper of the goods. Carrier, information about the shipping company, freight forwarder, or carrier responsible for transporting the goods. Consignee, detailed information about the recipient or buyer of the goods. Port of loading and port of destination, information about the ports where the goods are loaded and unloaded. Description of goods, detailed description of the type, quantity, packaging, etc. of the goods. Value of goods, the declared value and insurance value of the goods. Freight charges, the cost of transporting the goods and the payment method. Route of goods transport, the route from the port of loading to the port of destination. There are two types of bill of lading, a copy and an original. A copy is a temporary document used during the transportation of goods, often used for temporary confirmation when delivering goods. An original bill of lading is the final and legally valid document, which must be signed by the freight forwarder or shipping company and delivered to the consignee for receiving the goods. The bill of lading plays a crucial role in international trade as proof of ownership of goods and as a payment voucher. During the transportation process, it transfers the responsibility of the goods from the shipper to the consignee, ensuring the safe delivery of the goods and facilitating customs clearance procedures. How to calculate customs duties? The basis for customs duties is the customs value. The customs value for imported goods is the CIF, cost, insurance, and freight, value, which is the value of the goods, insurance, and freight charges up to the port of importation. For exported goods, the customs value is determined as the FOB, free on board, value, which is the value of the goods at the point of departure reduced by export taxes and reviewed by customs. The formula for calculating the taxable amount of customs duties is, taxable amount equals customs value times applicable tax rate. China's trade potential should not be underestimated, and if you want to achieve certain success in import and export trade, you must not neglect the Chinese market. Take action now. Welcome to subscribe to my account for more knowledge on import and export trade. See you in the next video.